Hello, my name is Jeff Passmore. I work for JDSU's Sales Support Organization, and I'll be your host today on uh, discussing uh, the HST 3000's current measurement. Uh, where we, we last left off on the uh, DC voltage measurement, and we were discussing under the digital volt ohm meter um, how the use of the up and down arrow keys changes the test. So if we, from DC volts, if we select down arrow, uh, we will go to the DC current measurement screen. DC Current's primary job is to signal the central office. Uh, what I mean by that is if you walk up to a POTS, uh, POTS line, you know you're walking up to a, a telephone with 52 volts of DC battery across it, right? Well, when you go off hook, you, you short the line. Uh, when you short a battery, current starts to flow. It's the current flow that the central office sees that alerts it to the fact that you need dial tone. Do you suppose the uh, central office uh, needs to see a certain amount of current flowing before it'll give you dial tone? Well, the answer to that would be yes. Right. The second thing uh, that you can do with current flow is found under F4. It's abbreviation for ground check. Go ahead and select F4. The HST uses a current comparison method, uh, checking the amount of current it sees across tip and ring and comparing that to the amount of current it sees ring to ground. Based on that comparison, it can determine whether the green lead is connected to a good or a bad ground. I'm going to switch over to my whiteboard to discuss this in a little more detail. Really, um, we are relying on, on Ohm's law to accomplish this, right? Well, uh, don't worry, we're we're not gonna we're not gonna dive into to Ohm's law. One of one of the uh, the most brutal training classes I ever had to go to was a three-day basic electricity uh, training class. We covered both AC and DC battery or electricity. Uh, over the course of three days, uh, we took turns reading out of these uh, rather large manuals. Uh, over that, or during that training class, I actually learned the color codes of resistors. Uh, there's something I used a great deal in the field. <laughs> well, I'm being a little facetious. Uh, Ohm's law obviously is very important, but I I, uh, I like explaining it using practical examples rather than uh, theoretical. So. There are, there are essentially three parts, right? There's voltage, resistance, and current. Well, Ohm's law basically says if you know two of those values, you can calculate the third. Well, we're interested in the current value. So from a voltage standpoint, POTS lines are pretty consistent. We're dealing with 52 volts. So the amount of current we see across tip and ring will be totally limited by the resistance in the current's path. Well, in our case, that's the cable pair, right? So when I go off hook, I <clears throat> put a short on the line, current flies down the ring lead through the meter and back down the tip lead, trying to find the other side of that battery, right? Well, tip is ground, right, in our world. So the tip and ring current path down the ring lead, through the meter, back down the tip lead, all the way to the central office ground, and we get a number. A current is measured in amps, but as telephone people, it's we hope that it's rare that we ever deal with full amps. Uh, well, that's kind of a dangerous situation. We deal with portions of an amp, in this case milliamps, or thousands of an amp. The second part of our current measurement did a ring to ground reading, right? Well, let's took, uh, take a look at its current path. It's down the ring lead, through the meter, to ground, or wherever you have the green lead connected, right? Does that ring to ground current path sound shorter to you than a tip and ring? Remember, tip and ring was down the ring lead through the meter all the way back down the tip lead to ground in the central office. Ring to ground was down the ring lead through the meter to ground. 
sound shorter to me. In fact, it sounds half as far. Well, if it goes half as far, that means it has half the resistance. If you lower resistance, current goes up, according to Mr. Ohm. So in this case, we've cut the resistance in half. Consequently, the current should double, theoretically. If, in fact, the ground is good. But, heck, that's what we're measuring for anyhow. So that's how it works. Right? Obviously, you need dial tone for this. You don't have to remember the numbers. You don't have to remember any of this if you don't want to. The machine will do it all for you. I just think it's an important uh, refresher for how DC current works. Now, after telling you about this nice handy test that will let you know whether you're connected to a good or a bad ground, I've got to tell you the one central office that refuses to support this measurement, or at least it's the only one that I know of, and that is an AT&T ESS number 5 switch. When the ESS number 5 sees current flowing uh, from ring to ground, it's not really programmed for that. It says, I'm not going to allow that to happen. And what it does is it breaks the ground connection for that particular customer. Well, when you break continuity in a DC world, no current will flow, right? you got to have continuity. So I will get uh, next to no current flow here, ring to ground, and all of my readings will come back bad. Now the good news is, uh, the older ESS offices, the Stromberg Carlsons and the Northern Telecoms, they all seem to work fine. It's the ESS number 5, the only one to my knowledge that will not support the measurement. Very handy, a very handy measurement to make because I'm sure um, you're hearing more and more about how the importance of bonding and grounding for IPTB service. Right? So let me, uh, let me switch back to my HST and we'll give you an example of what one looks like in operation. All right, we're back out here to the uh, HST and we'll give you an example of what a uh, live uh, current measurement looks like. So if I go down arrow, I will measure the DC current. And then when I press F4, I will do the automatic current comparison and determine whether or not the ground is good or bad. Now a good ground uh, equates to a connection less than 25 ohms, so it gives you an idea of, of how low resistance that connection is when it says good ground. So that concludes our current measurement uh, presentation. We hope you enjoyed it. Uh, thank you for joining us, and we hope that you will join us for the next, which will cover uh, resistance, shorts and grounds. So thank you again.